Okay, so uh, let's, uh, yeah. So I have a question. When we get to this artificial intelligence, yeah. are you actually going to go through like, to the detail of how to, we can program the artificial intelligence, which is something very uh, basic? Because so, something very basic. Because I'm trying to get into this artificial intelligence, that's why. Okay, now here it's fairly basic. Very basic. Okay, so let's uh, look at uh, our web page here. Uh, next week is a big week, right, for this class. Uh, what's big? What? Computer. Um, it's uh, uh, three three types of questions, usually multiple choice. True and false, and then you have to write it an answer. Yeah. Yes. Uh, so next week uh, is a big week in this class. Uh, we're going to have the first examination next week. And also next week on Saturday, uh, we're going to have your first assignment is due. I added to the uh, uh, web page. Hot topics for examination number one. Hot topics. So let's look at what hot topics I wrote down here. Okay. Uh, number one, if you want to make an A, then watch the textbook videos, scan robot, and UMPC, a laser pen PC. Uh, there will be one question on each of these videos. Okay? If you do not have an online textbook, okay, try to find information on the internet about the scan robot okay, or the laser pen PC. Okay? No. If you want to watch it, you got to only have to have the online textbook. Yes. Both. Mm. Number two. I'm sorry. Are we taking this We don't have any places else to go. <laughs> That's the only place that us have. <laughs> anyway, we can go in the hallway if you want to. They can go in the lawn, you know, instead of the lawn. Uh, number two. Know how to convert between number systems. Decimal, binary, octal, and hexadecimal. Yeah. Number three, be able to add, subtract, and multiply in binary. Number four, know the material in CO1, CO2, CO3, and uh, IO1. Okay. I'm going to be talking about CO2 today. Okay. Uh, actually, I don't know. Um, we're going to get to CO3 or not, so uh, we're certainly going to have, uh, have this and this, okay, and maybe this. CO3 is basically the section on software. Now, uh, any questions about this? Yes. Well, sure. No, I'll do it right now. Any, any other questions about this? Yes. Okay, let's uh, do an example here of uh, addition and binary. Okay? And let's do uh, conversion, you know, plus addition. Let's start off in decimal with the number 25. This is the base 10 now. And let's say the number 13. 
and we want to add them together, okay, then we would get a 38, right? So the problem is, take a 25, convert it into binary. Take a 13, convert it into binary. Add the two binary numbers together, okay? And then convert the answer back, okay? So if we take 25 and convert it into binary, what is it? Yeah. So 25 is what? 1, 
one, oh, oh, one. Thirteen is one, one, oh, one. So multiply. Multiply one times this is one, one, zero, zero, one. Zero times all that is zero, 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 zero. zero. One times all this is one, zero, zero, one, one. One times all this is one, zero, zero, one, one. That's a one. Zero plus zero is a zero. Zero, zero, one is a one. One, one is a two. That's zero. Carry over one, okay? One and one is two. We carry over one. One and one is two. One. One two is three. Three is a one with a carry of one. One plus one is two, that's zero with a carry of one. So uh, this is a one, two, four, eight, sixteen, thirty-two, sixty-four, one twenty-eight, two fifty-six. So the answer is 256 plus 64 plus 4 plus 1. 6 plus 10 is 5. Okay, I'm going to move on. 6 is 12. Okay, I'm going to move on. Okay. So you can see uh, then the advantage of having diamond right? Uh, it's easier to do addition, it's easier to do multiplication, and that means that when you build circuit, it's cheaper. You can build a binary computer with less money than it takes to build a decimal. You can build a decimal computer that subtracts and multiplies the device just like we have normally done all our lives. It just won't be as fast. Uh, it won't be uh, cheap, basically. And uh, it'll cost more money. Okay, any uh, other questions about the quiz? Yes. Can we do a decimal binary to an octal? Okay. Let's convert. Uh, Number uh, eighty five. Okay. What is that uh, in decimal? What decimal number is that? Simple, simple, simple. simple. Okay. A is what? And it's in the sixteenth position, right? This is this is the ones position. This is the 16's position. Okay? That means this number gets multiplied by 1. This number gets multiplied by 16. Okay? 10 times 16 is 160. Plus 5, that's 165. 85 and decimal is 165. And again, you shouldn't have to struggle with this. Okay? Uh, you have to struggle, you know, for these things that you know, you won't be able to do things fast enough. You should try to get to where this is um, doing computer science. This is a nothing thing. Okay. okay um, the best way to convert from hexadecimal to off from hexadecimal to octal is convert hexadecimal into binary. So that's very easy, right? If you convert 85 in a binary, what do you get? That's real fast, right? The A becomes what? Wow. 
minus one zero one zero. This is the ones position. This is the twos position. Fours position. Eight position. Eight plus two. That's the eight. And the five is. Over one, over one, okay? Four plus one. So you can always convert a uh, hex into binary. Each hex character is four binary characters. Now to convert binary to octal is easy. You group them by threes instead of fours. Okay? Put these three together. Put these three together. You put these three together. Well, you have to add an extra zero right here. So 101 is a 5. 100 is a 4. And uh, 010 is a 2. So 2, 4, 5 uh, in octal. Okay. So in decimal, uh, this was what? 165. So this would be 2, uh, 8 squared, 64, plus 4 times 8, plus 5, okay? This would be 128, 32, and 5. Okay? So 128 and 32 is 160, plus 5 is 165. Uh, I started with uh, hexadecimal. It was two characters in hexadecimal. I took this first character, the A, and converted it into binary. I took the second character, the 5, I converted it into binary. You just put them together. Then, to go from binary to octal, I took the binary bits and grouped them by threes, okay? I group the 101 together, that's 5. 4 plus 1. The 100, okay, that's a 4. Each group of 3. Yeah. Okay, let's carry on then, okay, that's enough for you. Let's do something different. I'm going to start the uh, uh, PowerPoint side on hardware, okay? This is CO2, okay? So we'll talk about the hardware of a computer. And uh, so it says in this section, we're going to talk about processing. And we're going to talk about storage. And we're going to talk about input and output. And that's the way uh, that this goes, okay? However, um, I'm going to do it a little bit differently. I'm going to talk about storage first, okay? I think it makes it a little bit easier to talk about storage first, okay? Okay, so we all know computers have... as a memory, okay? Our memories, okay? It has a memory, like a person. It remembers things from the past. Okay? Computers actually have, in the back, two types of memory. They have what are called a primary memory. and a secondary memory. Now when you buy a computer, 
if you're looking at the, you know, uh, bag of fish, uh, they'll have these numbers on them, okay? You know that there are usually two numbers. You say, I have a computer, it has two gigabytes, okay? And uh, it has 500, uh, you know, uh, megabytes. Or, well, it'll, it'll, nowadays, uh, it'll be something like, uh, it'll have two gigabytes of primary memory, and it will have 500, okay, uh, gigabytes of secondary memory here. So what's the difference in primary memory and secondary memory? Well, primary memory uh, is smaller than secondary memory. So I'm going to say primary memory is small, although that's a relative term. Okay. Secondary memory is large. Uh, primary memory is fast. Whereas secondary memory is low. Primary memory is powerful. And secondary memory is non volatile Like I say, these are these are relative things, okay? Oh, except volatile. What does volatile mean? Did you ask me? <laughs> volatile means that when you turn the switch off, primary memory is lost, yeah. But secondary memory is not lost, okay? The primary memory depends on you know the switch being on. You turn off the switch, it just forgets everything. Secondary memory, next door to secondary memory, is still there. Turn the power off, it, it still keeps everything. Primary memory uh, is uh, always solid state nowadays. Um, it's stored, uh, primary memory is stored uh, you know, on the motherboard. I mean, it's, it's, it's an integral part. Of the computer, uh, secondary memory can be uh, is usually like on a CD or DVD or a uh, little uh, thumb drive, you know, uh, one of these little. Don't have one, but many. Don't work. This is a thumb drive right here. One of these little things, right? This one right here is four gigabytes. This is called variously flash memory. A flash drive or a thumb drive. Now, uh, let me talk about primary memory, okay? So, uh, we, um, now, everybody, nowadays, uh, stuff is stored on a computer in bytes, okay? So, what we want to know is how many bytes there are. So, if we say, uh, you know, I have a computer, and is, uh, say, one gigabyte. That means what? Giga means what? Mega means <laughs> what? We used to, we used to uh, measure computers in the kilobytes of memory. Oh, this is really big. 
It's got uh, 64 kilobytes of memory. That means kilo means 1,000, 1, okay? And a mega, megabyte, that means a million. And gigabyte, that means a billion, okay? So this is 10 cubes, okay? This is 10 to the 6. This is 10 to the 9. Okay? So if I say I have uh, 1 gigabyte of primary memory, that means I've got 1 billion bytes. Now, uh, I'm going to diagram these billion bytes like this. This is the way we diagram memory. Well, like a ladder. Yeah, it is. Each one of these little uh, rectangles is one byte. Okay. So you can get this, okay. So then here we can write, you know, eight zeros and ones. Okay. Yeah, we got a billion of them. So, uh, if I have a billion of these, uh, how much information is that, okay? Well, uh, a billion uh, bytes is, uh, is enough to hold uh, a good book. And uh, maybe more. Now, we number each one of these bytes. Each one of these bytes has an individual address, we call it. So this is address zero, this is address one, this is address two, okay? All the way down to, so we have one gigabyte. This last address down here would be about one billion more or less, okay? Now, uh, the thing I want you to realize is these addresses of these bytes are bigger than the contents. Each byte can only hold one byte, okay? One character. It's for these bytes to hold an integer. Right? How many bytes do you have to have for the address. We have uh, the whole one billion. How many uh, let's, let's do this. Suppose, suppose you had two gigabytes of, of main memory. Okay. How long are these addresses? Come on, you know the answer. Two billion. That's where to figure that out, okay? See, these addresses are integers. And if you have two gigabytes, okay, of main memory, okay, you've got two billion addresses. Each address is like an integer data type. So uh, it takes four bytes. To hold these addresses, okay? So it takes four times as much memory just to hold all these addresses as it does to hold the data. Uh, but uh, where are you going to put it? You don't have that much room. Well, you don't actually have to hold the address. Uh, it's not necessary to uh, reserve room for all those addresses, okay? But it is necessary to be able to, if you want, you know, address number one billion, it's necessary to go down and uh, know where it is. Okay? So the data 
Delta is actually uh, over here. Are the contents, okay, uh, of the, the memory is there. Okay. And these addresses are the way we get at it, okay. So we don't have to have a big table of addresses. But we do have to, if we want to get anything out of memory, we have to uh, know how to how to get a, a particular uh, address. Now, where, whatever, wherever things are stored, we like for them to be uh, we like for it to be just as fast to get something down here as something up here. Okay? Want uh, um, and it takes the computer to get a piece of information. But in general, we're not going to know what these addresses are. So the fact that we can get the uh, in items just as fast as any other, we call this random access storage. Okay, and we say that this memory is. RAM, right? Well, suppose uh, suppose we had more than two gigabytes of main memory. Suppose we had uh, four by four gigabytes of main memory. Well, if we have four gigabytes of main memory, we have a problem. Four gigabytes of main memory uh, would be um, four billion, basically, right, um, bytes. And uh, we can't hold that in, um, in, in, in four bytes, okay? This is, this is too big, okay, to be held. That is the address. You cannot hold the address, okay, of anything that big. Two gigabytes is the max we can hold. Okay. What? In, in primary memory of the computer. Um, and uh, that's because um, you know the address that this is because the address that we have addresses are uh, reckoned or thirty two bits long. That implies, okay, max of two billion, okay. So that's a problem. Although today, uh, you know, when you buy a computer today, things are somewhat different. But, Um, you may know this, when you go and buy a computer today, you can either buy a 32-bit computer, or you can buy a 64-bit computer. Did you know that? So when you go and buy a computer now, today, and you have, this is something you didn't even have to talk about, but now if you go and buy a computer, you may say, you want a 32-bit computer or a 64-bit computer? Well, it depends, you know, I mean, if you're a macho computer guy, you know, like a computer science major, well, actually, I want 64 minutes, right? And, um, 
That means the yeah, it was a 64-bit computer. That means the address are 64 bits in it, not 32. And so, if you buy, you know, a computer that's a, a 64-bit computer, you're not bound by this two gigabyte constraint. And also, the operating system, okay, that runs the computer, there are 32-bit operating systems nowadays and 64-bit operating systems. And other programs, okay, are 32-bit, 64-bit. Now, this computer that I have here, this is a 64-bit computer. And here's Internet Explorer, okay? It says Internet Explorer here. Also says Internet Explorer down here. But they're not the same Internet Explorer. This Internet Explorer here says 64 bit. Okay. This is a version of Internet Explorer uh, that is a 64 bit version, okay. which means it treats addresses as 64 bits and it will run on a 64 uh, bit computer. This version down here, the Internet Explorer, is just the standard version of 32 bit. Now, you can run a 32 bit version on a 64 bit computer, but on a vice versa. So, this is an issue today, uh, and uh, the time will come shortly when 32 bit computers will be in the history. We used to have 16. Have eight bit computers. So, uh, 32 bit computers have been around a long time, but now we're going to 64 bits again. Now, in a 64 bit computer, uh, what's the maximum memory you can have? Well, it's two to the 64th power, okay? And that's really big. I haven't, I haven't actually figured it out, okay? Um, you can figure it out. You know, but it's uh, it's way more than you'll actually have. Nobody's going to have uh, that much main memory. You know, only a part of it, okay. But still, if it's more than two billion, uh, you have to go to the 64-bit. We call it a 64-bit architecture. We'll say in computing, we'll say, is this a machine a 32-bit architecture? Or is it a 64-bit architecture? Okay, so uh, that's the memory and uh, these addresses. Okay. Okay. Now, now I want to talk about uh, processing. So on a computer, we have a chip, okay, called the CPU. And this CPU chip is called, and that stands for the Central Processing Unit. Right? And then we have a separate area of the computer. This is the primary memory. And if we have uh, uh, one gigabyte of primary memory, and we have byte number zero, byte number one, byte number two, okay. down to byte number one billion. Okay. Now, the CPU is going to do all the processing, and so the CPU, uh, if it wants a piece of data, let's say it wants to just add two numbers together and create another number. Well, uh, in order to do that, um, the two numbers that you have uh, have to be somewhere in memory. Now, it captures, okay, 
uh, it'll be 4 by 12. So let's say you have a number A and a number B, and you want to add them together. And that'll be number C, because so C is going to be A plus B. Then A has to be stored in 4 bytes. B has to be stored in 4 bytes. And uh, C also has to be stored in 4 bytes. So it takes 12 bytes to do to add two numbers together and store the result. Now, um, so this number A has to be somewhere in memory. It has to have an address. Let's say the address of A, okay, uh, and we always do addresses in hexadecimal. Let's say A is in uh, address A5. And this one was what? Decimal is what? Come on, we just did it 10 minutes ago. A is 10. 10 times 16 is 160 plus 5. That's decimal 165, right? Okay, suppose A is stored in this address. Uh, but it actually, it has to be stored in 4 bytes. So A has to be stored in address. stored in A9. And B also takes four bytes to store, okay? That would be A9, A8, A, B, and A B. And we can put uh, the letter C back, okay, in A D. And it would be an AD, AE, AF, and 